I want to tell you a story about two people. One of them is me. The other is somebody that I met on the Rwanda-Burundi border in April of 2022. I had driven out to the border and I went into a woman's house. It was a very, very simple mud house. She was a lady who I guess was in her 60s. She was looking after three grandchildren. I could see immediately that the grandchildren were not in school, that they didn't have soap and water to be able to wash. There was no mattress. There was nothing really in her house. In fact, her entire possessions consisted of a single pot for cooking and her roof was leaking and she had nothing to fall back on. She was one of 700 million people living on less than $2.15 a day. It's difficult talking about individuals and we worry a lot and I think rightly about the idea of poverty porn. So I'm not going to talk about her name or talk too much about her because this is not about sympathy. This is about dignity and respect. It's about understanding that she and 700 million other people in the world are living in conditions which they should never be living in and where it is very, very difficult for them to survive a day or a week. And this is particularly true in an era of climate change where if a drought hits, people will literally starve to death. What are we supposed to do about it? Well, the first thing that we shouldn't do is imagine that extreme poverty is a problem which is just going to dip disappear on its own. In fact, there were 170 million people living in extreme poverty in Africa in 1980. There are 470 million people living in extreme poverty in Africa today. Question is, what are we going to do about it? How are we, in the old words, going to make poverty history? How are we going to fulfill the commitments of the United Nations to do this? Well, I was part of that system. I was in international development for 25 years. I ended up as the UK's Secretary of State for International Development. That meant I had a large office, I had thousands of civil servants, I had a budget of 13 billion pounds a year, or 20 billion dollars a year. We were working in 50 countries. And I was part of a system that has really existed since the Second World War. And the fundamental idea of the system is that people like me, or who look like me, go around the world essentially telling other people how to improve their lives. Instead of giving them cash, what we really did was provide different forms of training, or in our fancy words, capacity building. And at the core of it was a slogan that everybody will remember. Give someone a fish, they eat for a day. Teach them to fish, they eat for a lifetime. And in the pursuit of teaching people how to fish, I found myself going to Zambia, uh, I went to Eastern DRC, I went to Rwanda, I went all the way around the world. And what I found was that we were not making much difference. At first I thought the problem was maybe we didn't know enough. Maybe what we needed was to have more civil servants, train up more, learn local languages more, spend more time in remote rural areas, do ever more careful studies of local communities so that we could listen to people and give them exactly what they wanted. And then Suddenly, my mind was changed, and my mind was changed in that house. Because what had happened in the spring of 2022 is I had traveled with a nonprofit with a charity called Give Directly. And Give Directly had a completely revolutionary idea, which basically changes everything we've been talking about in international development for 70 years. The idea was that instead of turning up and teaching this woman, what she should be doing with her life, instead of teaching her nutrition, instead of teaching her how to set up a business, instead of bringing in engineers to fix her house, Give Directly simply gave her $700 of cash and told her she could spend it on whatever she wanted. Even more radically, they did the same for every other house in the village. Now, this was horrifying to me as the next Secretary of State for International Development. I thought, what on earth are we supposed to do with people like me if we're just giving out cash? That's the first problem. Second problem, I thought, well, surely this isn't sustainable. Surely they're going to waste the money. Surely this is completely mad. This isn't international development at all. But the results were staggering. Completely counterintuitive, totally staggering. Within about three months, that village went from about 40% of people having electricity to 80% of people having electricity, from under half of people 
owning livestock, to almost anybody, everybody owning livestock, to every roof in the community being fixed, to 100% of people ending up with toilets or latrines, to 100% of people signing up with government health insurance, to new businesses springing up, to more children in school, to bone density and stunting improving. And this was not just anecdotal because two enormous revolutions have happened in the world in the last 20 years. One of them is the invention of mobile money in Africa, which means for the first time, this lady can be issued with a phone, a phone that costs seven, eight dollars, and money can be transferred directly to her phone with no intermediaries, no government in the way, no charities really in the way. Most of that money can arrive directly with her. And the second big revolution is a revolution in research randomized control trials, like a medical trial, where you have a control group and a treatment group, and where you make sure that you study over three, six, nine, 12 years, a random group of people, so that you can cut out all the other noise and really work out what is making a difference. The world that I used to work in, we couldn't really tell what made a difference. You know, we told ourselves lovely stories. I've gone into a village, I've done a program, and what do you know, 10 years later, here's a, a woman who's in university, and we would take credit for it. We never thought to say, might she have been in university anyway? Might this have happened without us? What would have happened if we did something else? Suddenly we could study this. And what the studies demonstrated is that cash outperformed almost every other intervention. Totally radical. It did better than a nutrition program in delivering nutrition, better than a youth business program in delivering youth business better than an education enrollment program at getting children into school. And why? Well, because we were wrong about the whole thing. It turned out that when we were going around the world saying what we need to do is teach someone how to fish, the villagers either already knew how to fish, but just didn't have the money to buy a fishing hook, or they didn't want to learn how to fish. They wanted to open a bakery. The fundamental idea here is that Somebody on the Rwanda-Burundi border, living in a house, has an experience and priorities which are radically different to that of myself, or indeed perhaps somebody coming in from the capital city from their own country. And it isn't just that the views of that community are different, each house has a different priority. She may want to get her children back at the school, her neighbour may want to open a bicycle shop, another person may want to get somebody into a clinic, someone else may want to fix their roof, somebody else may want to buy a cow, etc., etc. The point is that individual preferences are completely different and cash is like water flowing into a mountain landscape. It can fill all those gaps and crevices in individual lives in ways that we cannot begin to anticipate. More than that, it is radically respectful. In a world that is worried about patronizing colonial aid, it's not somebody turning up and doing a needs assessment or consulting people and then telling them what they need. It's literally giving them cash, unconditionally getting out the way and determining their own future. It is more scalable. It is more efficient. It is more replicable. It's all those things. But perhaps more importantly, it gives people dignity. It is an exercise, I believe, in radical humility. So the question to take away is what should you do if you want to address extreme poverty around the world, if you want to deal with this abiding shame of people living, not able to meet their most basic needs? And my answer is quite simple. Give them cash.